Griselda Blanco is one of the most fierce and most revered cocaine drug queen that has ever lived. Yeah, she is a well known um, drug dealer and she has been often used as a symbol of women empowerment because she became the first woman in the 70s to run a drug cartel and being a woman then nobody believed that you know she could do it so griselda blanco grew up in Cartagena, colombia and it was in a slum area where lawlessness thrived you know bodies were found everywhere and children would see these dead bodies everywhere you know people got shot like every day kids got shot adults got shot in the presence of kids yeah and it was just something like so normal it wasn't um something be like oh my god this happened no 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 no, no, no. it was so normal that even kids were given guns to walk around with yes and uh, in in that slum in Katajin, there was, you know, kids were used as drug peddlers, you know, crime was everywhere. So it wasn't such a big deal to find a kid with a gun, okay? So Griselda Blanco didn't know her father. She grew, she was raised by her mother. Now her mom was, a, you know, night nurse in quotes, you understand what I mean? Yes. And she really mistreated Griselda. Like, she was just so um, angry, you know, just out of personal issues. And she would beat up Griselda, yeah? She would just beat up Griselda so badly. So one time she beat up Griselda. At age 11, she beat up Griselda terribly. Now, of course, there are different stories to this, yeah? When you watch uh, The Godmother of Cocaine by Catherine Zeta-Jones, who acted as... Griselda Blanco, you'll see that she was, you know, like the mom used to use her, sell her off to older men. Yeah. Yes. But the real story is that the mother beat her up. Okay. Beat her. And at age 11, Griselda managed to escape with a bleeding nose. And you know, she was hurt. And she ran away, actually, away from her mom, from the house. She went to a forest. Yeah. And when she went to a forest, she found herself in a new town. And in a new town, she met uh, her first husband. Yeah. No, actually, she had to survive. Okay. So she kidnapped this rich kid eh, and uh, requested a ransom from his parents through a phone call. But the parents didn't take it seriously, considering it was a kid's voice. And Griselda Blanco needed to show them that she was serious so she made her first kill yes she shot the boy in his head yeah and left him there because she needed the money and uh when she was 13 years old she met this guy his name was alberto alberto became her first husband and uh, the man who would you know they would bear three kids together at age 13 that is well alberto first taught her how to you know uh smuggle drugs because he was already a cocaine dealer so he taught how to smuggle drugs and create counterfeit passports you know and all that stuff and griselda became so smart and she mastered all these things yeah to help the peddlers you know smuggle drugs throughout colombia and outside of colombia and um, they had three kids well griselda grew up and they moved to Miami because they needed to, you know, grow and expand their business. And when they did that, they had an issue with Alberto. They got into a fight and, you know, people got shot and Alberto was shot and he died. Well, it is said, history says that it's Griselda who killed him. Okay. So she's also known as, you know, like the spider, you know, you meet and after meeting, kill your mate. Okay, so she moved on and went to Miami and she established her drug business. I mean, she worked hard, she pushed everything, you know, she pushed herself, you know, and she built a cocaine drug business, a very successful one. Actually, it was worth hundreds of millions. Actually, when she was arrested in 1985, her business, her net worth was 118 million. That is just what the cops managed to um seize so you can imagine it was worth 
even 200 and 300 million. And that was just in the 80s. So yes, this mama was a bad ah, mama jama. Like she was that bad, yeah? And Griselda Blanco was this ruthless mama. Like she would just kill you because you owe her money or she would just kill you because she didn't like you or if she just felt some sense of betrayal, she just kill you. That was it. Yeah. So Griselda Blanco is known as the the godmother of cocaine. Yeah. La Madrina. That's what they call her. Yeah. And Griselda had to fight through male dominated cartels, you know, against Rafa, against uh, the Ochoas. And this mama kept pushing and she became ruthless yeah and if you watch the series uh by sofia uh, sofia vergara you can see how she moved from you know being a housewife to being the most revered you know cocaine drug queen yeah and griselda blanco was so ruthless that people just feared betraying her Anyone that worked for Griselda Blanco just feared betraying her. They could not dare do that. They could not. Yeah. And she was just a one woman. You know, she was running it one woman as a single woman. And she loved the good life. Like you can see, she used to dress nice, expensive clothes, you know, do her hair regularly, you know, her nails always on point. And she, her confidence was like a hundred percent. It was on a high level. Yeah. And people admired this. And actually Pablo Escobar and Griselda Blanco actually tried to kill one another. <laughs> Yes, they tried to kill one another and Pablo Escobar admitted that the only man he had ever feared was a woman named Griselda Blanco. That was the only person, Pablo Escobar, you can imagine, Pablo Escobar ruled the cocaine, you know, business in the 80s and he learned from Griselda actually. Yes, Griselda Blanco taught him how to, you know, peddle drugs and, you know, get into the cocaine business. Basically, Griselda was his mentor, mentor. Yes. So this mama was that fierce, yeah? And uh, if you see Griselda Blanco, she had to fight through a lot. That's what made her fierce, you know, fearless and ruthless. Yeah, she had to fight through a male-dominated cocaine industry where people doubted her because she was a woman, she was a mother and a former housewife Yeah, when she was married to Alberto. And Griselda had to fight through a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And word has it that when she was arrested in 1985, Griselda was still running her business behind bars. Yes, and she would still rake in like 50 million. And that was uh, too little compared to how much she would make when she was outside. Yeah, and she would still make money. Her drug peddlers would still continue doing the work. You know, everyone was still working. Her operations were still running. And she was locked up for like 15 years. Actually, she was supposed to go away for uh, 20 years. But she was locked up for 15. Okay, some some stories say 13, others say 15. But she was released in 2004. And uh, she was, uh, you know, she was a free person. And she was still running her business. Her business was still doing well. And um, as narrated by one of her, you know, her boyfriends, I will not mention names, you know, for, you know, uh, copyright and you know legal issues i will not mention but if you watch the cocaine cowboys on youtube you will see him he will say that he will tell you that you will learn from him that um griselda blanco was classy even behind bars yeah and you could feel the ambience of power that she had every time she walked into you know the common room yeah you know, she would pay the security guards like $1,500 so that she could have time with her boyfriend, yeah, conjugal rights, you know. And uh, Griselda Blanco still ran her operations behind bars and he, she would pay this, her new boyfriend, to 
run operations and he was good with her sons and her children yeah and uh she she is just a bad mama jama for real like they need to do a song about griselda blanco <laughs> I think they need to do a song about Griselda Blanco because this mama did it, yeah. And um, before she was assassinated in, I think, 2012, that, that's it, when she turned 69 years old, well, that's when she was assassinated and, you know, and her story just became world-renowned, yeah. And her sons, Ozzy, Dixon, and Uber were, murdered also during drug deals they were just carrying out the operations and they were murdered and um what has it is that the one that assassinated griselda blanco was actually had planned and had waited on her to get out so that you know she would they would finish her off yeah but griselda blanco is a symbol of women empowerment like if you watch the movie, the series by Sofia Vergara Griselda, you will see how um, her friends w- w- would say, one of her very close friend actually said, people in Medellin don't believe that there's a woman narco up north. Yeah? Like, even the police don't believe that a woman can be a narco. The police did not believe that. Okay? So yes, she is a symbol of women empowerment. She she's strong, she's powerful. You know, she ran a drug business. She lived a good life, like you can see in this picture, dressing classy, having nice, expensive things. Yeah, she loved the good life. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to watch the next video on Maleficent.